Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the video. This time is the Mexico 112 Collective, John Stewart, the Green Lantern. So, let's get started. Uh, what can I say? I'm a big Green Lantern fan. It's why I have Green Lantern tattoos. And I'm very happy to actually have this figure. It's really cool that we got John Stewart. Hopefully, we get uh, Kyle and Guy, because I know we have Hal as a PX exclusive. So, I'm really looking forward to having the four Earth Lanterns before it ended up becoming six later on. But uh, if we get Baz and Jessica, I would be totally excited for that, too. I love the Geo Core. So I'm hoping we uh, actually get a ton of different ones. But if this is all we get so far, I'd still be happy. Better some than none. Now, let's get started. I want to start by saying I do believe that Geo uses a mix of Batman Beyond and uh, Black Panther Body, which is also used on Flash and a few other figures. So it's a little bit more smaller and slimmer, but it looks absolutely fantastic with this. Uh, the body has tons of articulation. It is not hindered by the mobility of the suit. And it's way more stylized for the design of what John Stewart is. But I see totally what Mezco is aiming for because John is an architect. So you aim for the architectural design in him. Uh, he was a Marine too as well. So he is more structured, more base uniform guy. So if this was the stylized standard GL costume that you would get, uh, this would totally be a John Stewart looking thing. Uh, they gave him the Caesar, a dark Caesar. Just cut down low. Uh, John actually uses the uh, military buzz cut down in the comics, but I don't mind this look at all. Then they also gave him the JOU bald head look, so we'll jump into that in a second. Now, first things first, we're going to jump into articulation. Now, let's see if we can make this guy look good. The head can look up and can look down, can tilt left and right. The collar is soft, so you have to be careful in bunching it because if you do that too much, it'll cause a little bit of wrinklage there. But he does have a ton of movement and range in the neck that allows you to get very, very creative. As you can see, you can look up for flight poses and things like that, and that's something that people will worry about. We don't have a butterfly joint here with this guy, but his arm can actually rotate all the way up with no issues. Like I said, the suit doesn't hinder anything. Arm can go up, arms are double jointed. So you can put your hands up on his hips, then he dips, you dip, we dip. Rotate down and around, and it looks absolutely great no matter what you're doing. You get your standard Mezco joint that rotates all the way around with no issues, left and right. Then we have the uh, upper torso. Upper torso wise, you can rotate left, rotate right. You have a very good ab crunch towards the top. You have a bottom ab crunch that moves and rotates on a ball joint. You have leg articulation that goes forward, but not backwards. You have it that goes out. There's a thigh swivel as well. And legs are indeed double jointed and has a very generous ankle pivot that allows you to go forward, back, and rotate left and right. So if you want to do, uh, let's say you do flight poses, right? You're guided by your ring. So you want to have the right arm up. And voila, he actually looks really good doing flight poses. This is going to be really great for those of you who like those static poses that just look good like this doing your Superman or anything like that, definitely can get into range for a ton of stuff. Then, if we're talking about doing crouching poses or anything like that, there's no boot swivel. So let's say you were fighting, you're doing your best protection, I guess this would be a protection or reactionary pose that you would see a lot in Green Lantern art. You could do all of that stuff. Looks really great. Now, let's talk about his accessories that he comes with because I know that's the main part that people want to get to. And I'm going to leave the stock head on for now. Just make you look good, John. Voila. First things first is the lantern. And the reason why I want to go over this is because it has a very cool light up feature when put next to the base ring, which is why I wanted to leave it on. So it lights up when you actually put it next to the ring. Let's get a quick look at it before it lights up. It takes batteries, which come with it. You're going to, have to unscrew the bottom and put them in. I believe it's LR44 batteries. So we're gonna turn these off. And easily when you put the ring to the lantern, voila, it lights up. And it lights up throughout because of the textural design. So that's really nice to have. It's a really nice piece because of that. And I think that uh, that little extra little feature is really dope. I wish you could do it for all of the stuff, but it doesn't really work out that way. Anyway. We also get a ball head John Stewart, which is definitely reminiscent of the Just League Unlimited look that he had in the animated cartoon, which is really great. Um, this one, they give him a goatee and they give him a more action-y face. I would have actually preferred a multiple heads for this one, 
but they wanted to give you multiple designs. One thing I do like that they added here is that they gave him the green eyes, whereas here they gave him brown eyes on his stock head. So that's something I don't know if anybody else noticed. The action JLU ball head definitely has the activated green eyes, where it has his brown ones here. So keep that in mind. Then you have a slew of effects. There is a ring effect for a shield effect. This is all one piece. It does not come off the ring. Uh, so as you can see, we wrote it here. It's soft plastic on the outer rim. This allows you to add things to it, defend against it, do whatever it is you want to do. But this allows you to do that. There is a fish punch effect. Oh, fish. <laughs> There's a fist punching effect. Now for the fist punch effect, actually, you actually remove any of the ring hands and you plug the peg in to it. And that's actually how you have to actually use that. So ooh, you have to line it up pretty well too. So what I suggest you do is you line it up along the bottom where there's the least amount of uh, flaming prongs and voila, it plugs right in and now you have your punching effect. That was a really nice addition. I wish we could have kept it with the ring hand on, but I'm guessing there was issues fitting the ring. I'm gonna leave that off for a second though while we add uh, other ring things to it. You have the ring with overcharge and flow. This is a really great feature right here. I really like this. This is both reminiscent of Hal and his overcharged ring, or just when you show a lot of spirit and willpower. So that's really dope. Then you have the Emerald Shine ring hand, which is really dope. This is, I guess, where if you wanted to do like after you had your lantern and you want to light them up to show a beacon, you know, do the oath in brightest day and blackest night and so forth. Then you have an extra Green Lantern symbol. And I'm assuming that this was supposed to be something that I guess was abandoned, or even if you just lose it or it chips paint, you have a extra. So it's very nice that they threw that in. Then one of my favorite effects is the straight beam effect with, you know, solid structures and things like that. I really like this. I do wish that it came with more John Stewart centric stuff because we don't get enough John Stewart in my opinion, but uh, I'm happy with the general constructs and probably will learn how to make my own or have someone else make them and it'll be really cool. But this is actually a really good piece right here. This reminds me of Space Ghost and all the cool effects we got for Space Ghost. So it's cool to see more space oriented uh, stuff like this. It's a very nice look. Let's leave you like that. Then for the other hands that you get, so you'll get two relax hands for your Green Lantern or relax action hands. You'll get two flight hands. Voila. Then you get your closed fist, and this one you actually get one opened left hand for carrying your lantern. So when your lantern carrying, or when you pull it from the pocket universe, it holds just fine. Really cool things to have, really nice stuff. Overall, I'm very happy with this Green Lantern. It's one of those things where the articulation and the look actually give a great representation of a character, even when stylized. So I'm also very biased as a big Green Lantern fan, especially that of the Pete Tomasi and Jeff Johns run from both Green Lantern and Green Lantern Corps. So uh, I'm a little biased, which means a lot, but it also is one of my favorite representations of a character because then you have stuff like Emerald Dawn and then it, it's just, it's a lot to go through. But if you've been a fan throughout the years and you wanted an updated Green Lantern, that's really nice and kind of not the same thing over and over that we got from Mattel, this will be a very nice thing. Recently, we also got a DC Icons one, which is also pretty nice, but it was awfully small and it was a very good start to what we had going on. Now, we're gonna jump into size comparisons and uh, see what we got going on. Let me stand him up as much as possible. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually compare him to his DC Icons, which I just mentioned. And this, was, this one was also a little bit more stylized, but this is one of his old costume, kind of gives you a mix of other things. Really wish they would have gave him the modern costume and modern look. So here he is with the DC icons, which was definitely closer to the SHF in terms of scale. And it's crazy how much, like they're not much bigger. So they definitely made John a little small, but I like it. I definitely like this one more. I'm still a fan of this one though, but I like the Mezco one a lot more. Now I'm gonna compare him to uh, other Mezco stuff, Justice League compatriots, team, people he can team up with, do some Brave and the Bold stuff. Here he is with the Flash. Here he is with Green Arrow. So in case you want to do your Brave and the Bold team-ups, whoop, caught one and let the other fall. That sucks. So here we go with these three. 
then we're going to add Superman and Batman. And once we get a comic Aquaman and comic Wonder Woman, you can actually get your seven Justice League members and uh, swap it up if you want. Or even add different members. You can add Shazam if you wanted to. Or Black Adam. Depend. Well, that's JSU. But the point is, you can actually have your feature of characters. So here's five of the seven Justice League that most people know. And they actually look good together. So this is actually a very good look. Or even if you take out a few of them, you could just do Brave and the Bold team-ups. There's tons of stuff that you can do that actually would seem really cool here. Now, let's take all these guys away. One more thing we're going to compare them to, at least that's in the DC Universe, is we're going to compare them to the DC Essentials Cyborg Superman. For those of you that are going to be curious about your Hal Jordan and who he's going to fight, here is a Cyborg Superman. Um, and I think Cyborg Superman should be imposing and terrifying and big. So I'd have a problem with him being much taller. Mine's actually has an issue standing up with a robot leg. I don't know why it has that issue, but it does. So I'm going to hold him up. Then we have Darkseid from Mezco as well. And as you can see, doesn't look bad at all. Looks pretty good. So I'm definitely going to have some fight scenes between those guys going on. Now we're going to compare it to other stuff and other lines so you guys can see what's going on height-wise and when you want to cross universes. Here he is next to a synthetic human. In case you want to get your AI fights on. Here he is with an SH figure arts Kamen Rider Cougar. Here he is with a Mythic Legions character. Big guy, big guy. Here he is with a uh, Hasbro Lightning Collection Power Ranger. So as you can see, the Mezco kind of fits in well. John is actually a little smaller than what I can tell from other ones, but it just seems like he fits in well with other Mezcos. Here he is with a Storm Collectibles Scorpion. Pretty small. And my favorite crossover that I really want to do with these two, I swear we never got it in the comics, is Green Lantern teaming up with a Predator, who will also probably fight an alien. And here he is next to NECA's Resurrection uh, alien, who is gigantic. So he doesn't even fit on camera. But these are fun things I want to do, right? Fun, fun stuff. Overall, a great piece, very nice features, and it's a win-win for me. But in case you are not a Big Green Lantern fan or a casual one, hope you found it informative and I hope you enjoyed. But most of all, guys, hope you do good, be good, drink your water.